Hey what's up guys, EG Turk here and today I'm going to bring you a new series on how to not suck at Kerbal Space Program. I'm probably not the best person to give this advice but I have had fewer successful missions so I'll give you some information to go off of. I've been asked to go through things like the menus, how to build a craft exactly, what the things in the build menu do, then how to launch, how to set up an orbit and possibly land on the moon. I will also eventually get through to the space planes, but personally I haven't had much success in them yet, so I'll have to learn before I show you. Other than that, we'll get underway, and I will teach you the Kerbal Space Program. So, as you start into the game, you come up with this splash screen. You have the start game, your settings, your KSP community, the spaceport credits and quit. Start game, basically, is what takes you into the game. This is where you start playing and everything from there. The settings, basically that's where you set your settings for audio, visual, everything like that. KSP community is, that's where you go for your forums, so you can go ask people who else play community on their advice how to do something, or you can have discussions on best designs, etc. The spaceport is where you can go get mods, other craft that people have built already, things like that. And credits and quit are, well, I guess you could guess what they are. So once you go into the start game menu, you'll be shown the resume saved, start new, training or scenarios. Resume saved and start new are basically your own story. Training puts you in a specific setup where a Kerbal scientist will guide you through on how to play the game. And scenarios are you're put with specific things and you have to you have to set it up, so you have to solve the issues or carry on with the issues, etc. So I'll start a new game just so I will be able to do this. How here you can see you have sandbox and career. Career mode means that you have to do missions individually and so every mission you get you get the science and with the science you get to put new things up in the air. You unlock better parts for your aircraft. In sandbox everything's unlocked and you can just do whatever you want. You're free to play and you just have fun. You have your flags I like to go with this one, but you pick a flag. This basically, when you plant a flag on a planet, this is what you see. You also see it when you're in the VAB, the Vehicle Assembly Building. So then you start game and you'll load in. Load times for me are slow because I haven't got a powerful computer. There we go. So basically, here you have the runway, the space plane hangar. Basically, the runway is what you launch your space planes off of, obviously. You have the Vehicle Assembly Building, or the VAB and the launch pad. Rockets launch off the launch pad. This is where you build your rockets. You have the tracking station, so any missions that you have currently carrying on, you can access them here, you can take control of them here. You can interact with them here, basically. You can recover craft, you can end terminate missions, etc. You have the astronaut complex. This is where all your Kerbals are. You can go put them in, recruit them for your missions, etc. And finally, the new feature they've had in the latest version is the research and development center. This is where you unlock everything for the tech tree in the career mode, and that's how you advance with career mode. So we'll hop into the vehicle assembly building, and I'll walk you through it. All right. So as soon as you get in, you are met with this menu or this screen. Ignore these things; those are a mod that I have installed, but that's I've, there's a tutorial already up for that. But otherwise you have the pods, these are your command pods, they're either manned or unmanned and this is what essentially controls, if you don't have a pod you can't control the craft. Propulsion, this is going to be your engines, your fuel tanks and your RCS tanks, it's also got the fuel duct which basically moves the fuel around the system. You have your control, this is your, you'll find your SAS here and your RCS thrusters. The SAS is basically what keeps your craft steady, pointing in the direction that you want it to point to, without it wobbling. It basically adds a gyroscopic control to the system. And then the RCS is what lets you move around once you're in space, because things like fins and the reaction wheels won't work as well when you've not got an atmosphere or gravity to act upon. In the structural, you have things like your adapters to make a thin body go to a large body, or the tri adapters to make it a single body go into three bodies. You also have things like the hard points. This is for putting things on the end, structural points. The splitters, multi hubs used for space stations, 
the connector struts which are very useful and the wire frames you also have your stack decouplers and your radial decouplers and also the stability enhancers basically these are all used for the a uh, how to do your staging in the craft you also have your aerodynamics this is what makes it actually takes a bit more effect in the latest updates and there will be basically it means reduces the drag you have the winglets and the canards and the everything for the space planes you also have the fins while you're on your craft and the intakes for air breathing in engines and that's pretty much everything in aerodynamics you've got tail connectors and stuff for your plane this is, aerodynamics is mostly for planes in utility you have things like your hitchhikers guide box you have the battery packs the electricity generation the ion engines, these are used in space because they're very low energy output. You have your docking ports. You have your science. You have a science unit here, I think. What's that? No, that's a clamp. Okay, whatever. You have enhancers. You have your landing legs, the parachutes, some lights, some ladders, and your wheels for landing craft and landers, etc. In the science, you have your Sensor array, you've got Mysterious Goo and Science Juno, these are used in Korea a lot more. And then you have your Communicron. Basically, this is used in Korea so you can get your science back or you can do your science uh, research. Other than that, you have. I'll get started on a basic craft. We'll put a. Where's the largest command? Book? There it is. Large, so we'll have a wide body craft with we'll just have something that'll go up and down so we'll have this and a fuel tank so this will be sort of satellite style while we're up uh, it'll need a engine so the something like the poodle is a you can see that it has a low mass a reasonable engine thruster level for the size of it. It's good for just using a craft going up and down. It's also good for landing on planets. Other than that, there's not much else you'll need here. We won't have any RCS, large RCS tanks, but we could do with maybe a couple of these. Down here, you have your symmetry mode and your angle snap. It's good to have angle snap turned on, and then you have the symmetry mode, so you can have, so put three in perfect. These will be in 60 degree intervals. And then you, or you can update these all the way up to eight, or you have singles. So I'm going to have two RCS tanks, just so I have some RCS control. Then we have things like your tordial fuel. These are very small, but they're good for a little bit of fuel carrying. We won't need any fuel ducts on this, the, this bit anyway. So we'll work on this to start off with. We could do with a bit of SAS. So the way the craft moving is you move if you click on the command module you'll move the whole thing then if, as you move down the body you'll move individual things so I can move that whole chunk and that would move any staging I've got underneath it as well and then move the poodle and it'll move anything that's below that so basically you just move what you click on you move what's below it anything that's mounted radially it'll move it works in a stage of if it's attached to something or something's attached to it it'll move the thing that's attached to it as well so if we'll just add two RCS thrusters as well, so we have some RCS control. Sweet, and take that off and put the SAS module on, so it's got some control. It'll be very spinny because it's a very small part. We'll go through, there's nothing in structural we need, apart from the radial decoupler, so we can just bring the command pod back down. We will also have, we'll put one on early something that's big that one there is this one the large one there we go these all these have different uh, decoupling forces sizes uh, impact tolerances and stuff so stronger things will hold the craft together well and it'll force it out better we'll work through so we can skip the aerodynamics if we take that off you will put the battery rechargeable battery on it so we have some power going into it there we go so now we've got a decoupler, a battery, and a, a, um, RC, a SAS tank. We'll need to have some electricity generation on it, 
so we'll have some of the solar arrays we will mount them um, we'll mount four of them you can press X as a hotkey to adapt to increase the symmetry mode or shift X will decrease the symmetry mode it's a little shortcut that's very useful so that's four of those oh, we will get a lot of electricity coming off of them and then we'll also put some of these thermoelectric generators so when these aren't in the solar panels aren't in use the thermoelectrics will be you can rotate parts as you're mounting them with the WASD controls and the Q and E. Shift does fine tuning motion, but it just makes it easier, for, especially with these thermoelectrics, just to mount them sort of sideways in the unit. It doesn't really make a difference to the craft. There we go. So we'll carry on through the utility section. So we've got our electricity generation and the battery. We won't need any struts, maybe a mobility enhancer or two, just so we have better mobility in the craft. There we go. We will need parachutes because I'm planning on getting this craft back down. You have to consider things like what sort of entrance velocity you're going to have as you come back into the atmosphere. So I like to put a lot of parachutes on it just to slow it down as much as possible. Other than that, we won't need ladders. Should we, we'll put a couple of lights on it. We won't. We shouldn't need any. Just because if it's dark, we'll want to be able to see where we land. There we go. We're not going to want to get anything out of the craft either, so we don't have to worry about getting the kerbals out. And that, that's the command pod, I'd say. Done. Science isn't really needed. We also have the sub assemblies. Basically, you can drag and drop the whole vehicle into your sub assembly drop zone. Apparently, I can't have that. Something like that. And you can make a sub assembly. So if I name that, I know. Uh, pro unit, whatever. Save that. You can then click that whole sub assembly and bring it back in. It's good for duplicating parts or using them in other missions, etc. So once we have that, you're going to need to have something, what we call the transfer stage, something to put it into the space or the launch stage, because we're not going to need to transfer. You're going to need a launch stage. You've seen me make these many times. So it's good to have a nice large fuel tank. These are the biggest fuel tanks that I've found or I use. So that's useful. And you're going to need a large powerful engine. The main cell engine is one of the most powerful ones. But it's also, yeah, it's very powerful. I just walked through an engine. I saw that. Anyway. <laughs> And as I'm, I'm going to do what I've made a tutorial on before and make the asparagus staging. So I will get the radial decouplers, make it six, like that. I'll then mount another six of the large orange engine or tanks and put some more main cell engines on them. There we go. And I will set up the asparagus staging. So we'll get the symmetry down to one, so it doesn't duplicate this all the way around. We'll go that one feeds to that one. You've heard me say this repeatedly. This one feeds to this one, and this one feeds to that one. And then we have this one feeding to this one. Come on, that one feeding to that one, and then that one feeding into the center. Like so. I missed. This one feeding to the center, like that. Okay. We will put a little bit of RCS on the top of these, just so we have some RCS in these, and we will be able to power them. And then we'll make them aerodynamic by putting a nose cone on the top. At the moment, this whole structure is going to be really wobbly. These, all these thrusters are going to wobble like crazy as you go up. So that's when the strut connectors come into use. I like to cover my craft in these. So we'll put some connecting these two together. So you will have some rigidity. These will move together. We'll put some along there as well, so those are moving together. We'll also put some connecting the nose to the sort of satellite 
body, which that failed. We'll go from the satellite, we'll connect it to the satellite body first. Um, it's not connected to the satellite body because that's the actual decoupler sleeve. So, if we connect it to there, there we go. Have I lost the asparagus? Answer is no. Good. So these should not wobble now. These should be quite stable. And finally, I need to set up the staging for the asparagus. What thrust is that? That's that there. This goes up into there. And we'll add two stages to put these into. So the first part of the asparagus is this one. Go on, select it. So it's there. And so that makes it this one's the opposite of the pair. So these are going to be the first to go. No, not the second, the first. And then you'll have these two. So let's open up the drop down again. So it's that one. And it's the top one. Okay. And then the second, the final pair. Okay, sweet. You'll then have this decoupler, which is that one in the middle, along with this engine. It's good to put them together so they activate at the same time. And finally, you have this decoupler, which is the one that will release the command pod for the rest of the craft, and then the two, the four, five parachutes. I will first lift it off the ground slightly and put some of the Stability enhancers. Just so it launches steady as it goes up. That's not straight. I have a little bit of OCD when it comes to building these. And if you put the, that's already put them, the stability enhancers along with the first engine, so as these ignite, they will open up and it will go up. And further than that, that's a basic craft to go up and down. Probably we'll go from into an orbit and we'll drop down out of the orbit again. You have the action groups. I'm not too clear on these. I don't know what to do with them, so we'll ignore them for now. <laughs> and the crew. So you'll see the crew that we have are Jebediah, Bill, and Bob. You can go to the astronaut complex and put more in, but these are what's going to go up and down, basically. Uh, courage and stability. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not completely sure. So we'll name the craft. So basic launch. I'll do. And basically, that's all you're going to need for that. We'll pre hit save or save launch. I'll press launch. And I'll end out here, and the next episode, we will actually launch the craft. Okay? So, next time, I'll see you guys. We'll get this into the air, we'll get an orbit, and we'll drop back down out of the orbit. So, until then, this is Turk signing off. I'll see you guys later.